Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I have some big updates for you guys, not only what's going on with this system up the East Coast, still showing it's going to be some pretty major impacts. What's going on in the upper Midwest with that second system, showing we have convective outlooks now out for it. We have a day 415 and a day 515 on that storm system that's coming in, and that's 15%, and that's day four and day five away, so it is going to get even stronger. Plus, what's coming in in our tropics as we go late September, early October, and a cold air anomaly we have coming in. Not only do we have a high pressure blocking over here, possibly in the Atlantic, bringing this system further to the west, we have a pattern coming in with a strong NAO. Where we're going to go into not negative and positive phases, where we're going to get a high pressure block up here in the northern Atlantic, and we're going to be on a Pacific North American pattern, a positive pattern, where this is going to go towards the center and the east coast with this cool air. With this blocking pattern, this is going to go further and further to the south. So we have some cool air coming in, bringing 30s and 40s all the way down to the south, bringing some 20s from up Midwest through the Central Plains as well, maybe even even further, guys. I know a lot of y'all have some maybe some gardens out there. A lot of y'all already already harvested already. But if you have any plants or anything going on, you might want to pay attention to this forecast because you could have some very much freezing conditions passing through as we go into October. So let me show you everything you've never been here before. Make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Timestamps will be in the description, guys. We have a bunch of things to talk about. If you watched the video all the way through, thank you so much. You are a legend in my book. I appreciate every single one of you. Now let's get into your information. Now, so far in the Atlantic, we have this still we have disturbance one in the MDR. I'm still showing that is going to swing all the way around, maybe go further and further to the west. Eventually, will swing around. Plus, we have disturbance two along the east coast. Remember last week, I told you just got to watch this as this goes up the coast. It is showing more strength, more flooding coming with this system. We are getting blocked by this high pressure. Matter of fact, we're going to go into dips of negative NAOs where we have a high pressure block up here towards Canada, northern Atlantic area. And this is going to help bring these cold dips on down, including that Arctic air later on. So here is Nigel this morning. Very strong system, but look at the size of the eye on that storm. A very big eye on this hurricane. Look how big that is. That is a huge eye on this system, guys. Very big, very broad, and still not going anywhere. You can see with the GFS, that is disturbance two on the East Coast, has grown in strength. By the time we get towards Saturday and Sunday, it is going to grow towards 30, 40, almost up to 50% chance. Once it gets in that yellow, it's going to go towards 60 of a, at least a tropical depression to form right off the coast. And Euro is showing it is going to take that northern track being blocked by the high pressure. We can also see this here as the high pressure comes in over the Atlantic. It blocks that system going any further to the north, and it has to get pulled to the west. It's being blocked by that, and it goes right into the U.S. Now, that's what the Euro sees. That's what the Canadian sees as well. GFS shows that it, high pressure is going to go further to the east, and this could slip out for just a moment. Euro shows it don't have a chance. It does try and form back up, but it does go in that same direction. Well, we still have that system building up over the central plains, and it is bringing that severe weather with it as we go into this weekend. And it is growing in strength, but you can see right here for the east coast, as it gets blocked by the high pressure, it makes it go to the west. Still bringing that banding on shore as you go through Friday, so there still could be an outlook chance for tornadoes as it goes through South Carolina and North Carolina, maybe even Virginia as it whips this banding around. So I will see if they update that, but so far that still looks like a potential. While this big system comes towards the central plains this weekend, and just turns into a strong anomaly, reaching further and further to the south, just stretching down. Very strong system. Still don't know exactly what's going to play out with this system. There's many runs through the different models that we do have of what's going on with this. Because the GFS, which is another system that we look to, shows that this system on the east coast could easily go by as a high pressure swings into the Atlantic, only blocks it for a moment, goes right up the coast and right on out. Now, Euro showed that path, but it didn't show it staying formed the whole time. GFS shows that it holds its strength. Plus, that system going towards the central plains looks a little more together compared to what it looks like on the Euro. Looks like it's going to head on that high ridge to the north and still bring severe weather in front of it. So we still need to watch out for that system as it forms. Now, they have put out an issue of 15% for Friday for that system I was talking about, guys. And so far, here's your cities and states at risk for Friday. 
and it will grow into Saturday as well. Another 15%, just like I showed you in the beginning of the video. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. But there's multiple outcomes that's coming with this system offshore. You can see with the Canadian, as that rolls in, it gets blocked by this high pressure going into the Atlantic, and it brings the storms on the east and northern side, and the wind as well, as it stays strong inland and then curves out through the northeast. And the Canadian is showing that it is bringing a lot of rainfall anywhere from South Carolina, North Carolina, all the way through the northeast. Plus, what's coming with that second system. The euro shows that it will get blocked by that high pressure. It will continue to go to the west, bringing those storms on the north and east side of it. But also we'll get another upper level low, a little vortex that goes right up the coast at the same time. And that's what gets pulled away, away from the center. So the storms is not around the center. The storms is further away from where the system is actually going to be. Plus, what comes through the Central Plains in the upper Midwest shows a lot of storms Friday, Saturday, maybe even into Sunday as well, guys. And remember, this is not a high-resolution model, so seeing this much detail this far ahead, five days away, is pretty good. And you can see the differences between yesterday and today in a 10-day. That's why you never really go by 10-day by law. But just to go by measurement, you can see how it kind of agrees with what the Canadian is saying, not as heavy as what the Canadian is showing. Canadian is showing a lot of heavy precipitation. The Euro and the GFS agree that the thunderstorms will be away from the center of location on this storm. As this goes up the East Coast, the Canadian is the only one that shows it will stay together, plus what forms in the South and Upper Midwest. Now, the GFS has been showing it not only is it getting blocked by this high pressure, these storms also, just like the Euro, will not stay around the center of this surface low that it will move out through the northeast ahead of it but at the same time it's showing that we could get another front induced low right after this one and you can see according to the gfs not only the first system but the second system that it's more like going to hit right along the coast guys and not go inland as deep as you've been seeing with the euro not even with the canadian which shows even more inside but you can see how it pulls away even when you go to the 6z the latest run on gfs it pulls it even further offshore with not that much of impacts. And you can see this from GFS, so it's blocks with the high pressure, goes up the coast and still squeezes out through the Atlantic and maybe another front induced low comes into effect. But when you go into the latest run, you can see that it actually shows that the high pressure will move by quicker and it will ride up the coast and go right on out. So either way, it's not showing a lot of precipitation with this system the canadian the euro showing heavy rainfall towards the northeast is lessened up over the mid-atlantic gfs shows it's even less guys even further offshore so we'll only know in days to come is still a few days away this is still four or five days away before it starts making its move but still may hopefully it won't it'll be offshore it won't bring y'all all that heavy rainfall but this high pressure comes in and blocks and sets up it will push it to the west and so far, the Euro Ensemble shows that it will group up pretty strong. It will try and linger apart up the northeast, but more than likely will stay around the southeast and be blocked and go into the U.S., guys. That's what the Euro Ensemble is showing. Trying to go up the coast, but pretty much gets blocked. Now, with the storms for today, we do have chances for wind. We have chances for hail, even large hail, two inches in diameter as well. So here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for today. The large hail is a white line on top. Also, for your damage and winds for today, here's your cities and states at risk for the damage and winds for today for Tuesday. But there is a tornado threat for today. It's a small threat, but it's for Oklahoma. So far, here's your cities at risk for your tornado threat for today. Not for tomorrow, this is going to change. You have a little hail threat, you have a little wind threat, but there's another tornado threat for tomorrow from Oklahoma going towards DFW. So, so far, here's your cities and states at risk for tornadoes for Wednesday. And Thursday, we got another day of severe weather, not just going into this weekend. We also have it today going into this weekend, guys. We have a 5% risk for severe weather for Thursday. Here's your cities and states at risk so far. Plus, you can see what's possible in the tropics after this. You can see what a couple of the ensembles of the GFS showing that first system coming offshore will stay together pretty good, but it will eventually get pulled to the east northeast, while more than likely it will stay surface low down below. So your storms will be separate from your surface low. And what could happen? You see how that 
disturbances in the MDR will eventually circle around. But there's a chance for a tropical wave to get into our Caribbean and go west and eventually circle around. Just like I told you yesterday, guys. But you can see the other set of ensemble members from the GEPS, another set that we have, and it agrees with the Euro that the surface flow in the system will stay further to the south, and that will move eventually to the west and go on shore. While in our tropics, not only do we have that disturbance that's going towards the Lesser Antilles, it is still going to circle around, but we still have something coming late September, early October, forming in our western Caribbean and going around the high pressure as well. So I'm still showing by both ensembles, we have something forming late September, early October, Western Caribbean, going through our Gulf, and maybe going right up the East Coast as well. So I'm still showing that a possibility, guys. But you can also see from your chance for favorable, unfavorable environment that after we get past some of the sinking air, that we do have favorable environment going into our Eastern Pacific as we go in through the beginning of October, and it just stretches right into our Caribbean and stays there even all the way into our MDR as we go through October. So it's definitely strengthening up. But look right here for late October. This is something new this morning. Right in our region, guys, a very strong anomaly coming around late October in the 20s. Plus, we have a chance for a very cold blast to come far south into our U.S. So when you look at your NAO, your North Atlantic Oscillation, you see how we're going into these dips in the 20s of September and at the end of September. We got these two dips that's coming into the U.S. Now, when you have a negative phase on the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, you get the high pressure blocking where you get a jet stream going in from the center to the east coast of the U.S. And this is where the cool air comes in. So you can see as the cool air is coming in for the rest of this month, in the 20s, cool air coming all through our U.S., guys. This is not really cold. It's just cooler temperatures all the way to the 25th. As we go towards the end of September and start going towards October, then we're going to have this very cold air start coming even deeper into our U.S. as we go into the end of September. And once we go into October, then it's really going to start changing. So, so far by October 1st, this is the temperatures we could be looking at. Not super bad, but it's going to get colder. Matter of fact, you remember when I showed you that this cold air on your Arctic Oscillation was coming in through the early 20s, and it was going to dip in, it was going to have some nice cool air coming in, another bounce coming through the beginning of October, and we got another one coming in before the 10th of October. But if you remember that cold air that was showing up later in October, Look at the update now. A big dip of cold air coming in for late October, early November. And I'm showing this could be 20s and 30s, guys. Plus, when you look at your PNA pattern, your Pacific North American pattern, you see how you're going into these positive phases. These positive phases will bring cold air from the center of the U.S. to the eastern side of the U.S. Along with the NAO block, this will bring cold air all the way down to the deep south because it will be blocked from going to the east. Now, that was the cold air I showed you through September, beginning of October. And look over here for late October when we have a lot of cold air coming. We're going into a positive phase. That means instead of the west coast of the U.S., this is coming all through the center of the U.S. towards the east coast. So when you're in a positive PNA pattern, this is where the high pressure builds up on the west coast and your jet stream comes in with the cool air from the center of the east coast towards the east coast of the U.S., Plus, we're going to be in that NAO pattern. Remember the NAO pattern? We're going to be in that block that I showed you. And with that block, instead of this going out through the east, it's going to build and go further and further to the south, bringing cool temperatures all the way to the Gulf. Now, the only model that I can see that far is the CFS, the Climate Forecast System. And it's showing by the time we go towards October 10th, we're going to have some cooler air coming in all the way towards the south, even some freezing conditions for the upper Midwest. But as you keep going towards late October, right where we have that anomaly showing the coldest air coming in, you can see how the block does with all this cool air. It blocks it from going out through the east, and it goes further down into the south, into the U.S. Now, as we go towards the 20th of October, it starts bringing in them 20s, guys. Very cold temperatures and bringing 30s all the way to the south. Look at these temperatures. Bringing 20s on the 18th and 40s all the way to the south. And as you keep going, you can see it brings 30s towards the south and it brings them 20s towards the upper Midwest. This is your temperatures. This is not including wind chill. 
But you can see this here from the shot from the, all of North America that the cool air comes in from the north. We get that high pressure block from the east and northern Atlantic. So it can't go out through the east coast. And we're going to be in a positive PNA pattern to where this is coming in around the center to the east coast. So you can see this happening from here. All this cool air coming in as you go through October. Gets blocked. Can't go out through the east. And goes further down the U.S., bringing cool temperatures all the way into the 20s of October. Very deep into our U.S., guys. Well, thank you so much for your time. God bless you and your families. If you find this video helpful, consider leaving a like. Thank you so much for your help. If you want to help another, I would really appreciate that. Share this on your social platforms to other platforms. Let people know what is coming around the corner. Thank you again for your time. Now, quick message for you as you go through today, guys. Ecclesiastes 9. 1 through 10. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise in their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean. To him that sacrificeth, and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner. As he that sweareth, as he that feareth in oath. This is an evil among all things that is done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yes, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after they go to the dead. For to him that is joined to all, the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for their memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Go thy way. Eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. For God now accepteth thy works. Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity. For that is thy portion in this life and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Amen. Thank you again for your time today, everybody. I hope you have a very blessed day out there today. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always keeps you safe, you and your family, every single day of your life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day. Everybody.